All right, 10 a.m. It is Thursday, April 22nd. This is week 13 of Canadian Culture Through Film for Champlain College. I'm Jason Rohde. And I am in Montreal in my studio at Nomad, as always. And today is a two-parter. On April 22nd, we are celebrating today, as we should every day, Earth Day. So I'm going to start the class uh, with a movie that, uh, a short documentary that I made nine years ago on this very day. A uh, very special day uh, that we had, as you'll agree. And, and then I, we're going to spend the rest of the class um, looking at the work of Xavier Dolan. Uh, I'm, I won't say more about this uh, incredible director, um, right, right from this uh, very neighborhood of the Mile End. So uh, to begin, Symphonie pour un 22 avril. I, I made the, this, I never managed to sell this movie. Uh, th this has happened uh, a couple of times for me where I, I put some energy, some time in into creating something and uh, then uh, you don't find uh, an audience in a way. So it, it's become a, you know, this is the case for every filmmaker really. Um, once your movie is done, it's really only the beginning of its life. You know, it's, this is much like a, a pregnancy, for example. You know, you, you, uh, once the baby is out, the life of the, of the baby is just starting. And, and that's the case for, for any movie. So um, I've, uh, I, I think mostly through Nomad and, and having the space to, to show my films and, and having uh, these kinds of um, broadcasting uh, capabilities, um, here through our, our own network and so on and doing our Nomad Live and, and these sorts of projects that I've taken it upon myself to show my movies to to make to, to give them the best life that I can. And so cer certain films like this one, like uh, Symphony for a uh, 22nd of April uh, would be the English title. Um, I, I don't show it quite every Earth Day, but but I try. When I remember, uh, I try to post it again and, and get a little bit of, of uh, interest around this incredible um, experience that I had. Now, I'm not featured in the film, but this feels like a very subjective film for me again because I was approached by a friend of mine uh, called... Dominique Champagne. Dominique is a uh, an activist, but he's also one of the very, very best uh, theater directors that we have here in Canada and in, in Quebec. Um, Dominique also has directed many uh, shows for Cirque du Soleil, for example. So he's really made his mark, and uh, and I uh, probably through his work with Cirque du Soleil, it's allowed him the uh, the freedom or luxury, you could say. To, um, to, to really devote his, himself to his uh, activism. You know, if uh, he, he, he did the show Love, uh, the Cirque du Soleil show in Vegas for uh, the Beatles, for example. He also did, uh, not Zootopia, but uh, something Zoo. Uh, I think it's just called Zoo in, uh, in Vegas as well. Um, which is like an erotic circus show for Cirque du Soleil as well. So, uh, you know, after every ticket that is sold, I guess you make a little money uh, in, in um, uh, what, do you, what do you call that? Anyway, you, you end up getting a, a few dollars or maybe a few uh, cents for every ticket sold in perpetuity. So, yeah, this has allowed uh, Dominique to, uh, to do what he... He can for his cause, and his cause is the common good, and um, that being mostly uh, the environment. And he's written a couple of books about this. and And in 2012, there were a few issues uh, that were close to his heart. And as Earth Day came up, I think it was less than two months away. Um, he uh, he decided to uh, to put together this, uh, this protest uh, march that would start in downtown Montreal and make its way up Park Avenue. Park is right up here uh, in, in the Myland, 
just a few blocks, like literally four blocks away from where I am now. So um, this, this March, he tried to gather as many people uh, as possible, and there ended up being about 300,000 people that marched that day, which was a kind of record for us. It might have been for the whole world as a, uh, as a protest. Um, and, um, you know, there's the Million Man March, of course, but f around the environment at the time, 300,000 people was a lot. And I, it still is, of course. And, and people all over Quebec did this as well. They, uh, they ended up um, uh, ringing their church bells all at a specific time, uh, all over the all over the uh, province and everyone was invited to this protest so everyone came not just people involved in the arts uh, that were already in Dominique's vast network uh, so a lot of work promoting the march was done that way through uh, all those Quebec celebrities and we have a lot of those here you know we because we have a closed market we we uh, we have celebrities here in Quebec that are only known in Quebec but are quite known here I've introduced you to a couple of them on on um, in this very class people you probably never heard of but that everybody knows of in uh, in Quebec so um so the word got out and the politicians got involved, of course, as well, um, environmental organizations got involved. So um, it was quite the day. And what did I do? Why did Dominique approach me um, to, uh, for this project? It was to capture this image of 200, we didn't know how many people were going to make it, 100, 200,000 people walking up this hill to create the shape of a hand or a tree, really, uh, growing from, um, from the place where Frédéric Bach, the man who made, the man who planted trees, which we've seen together, planted the seed and then this, this tree of, of this human tree would grow. And so we, we even got permission um, to, f to go at the top of this building to get the right angle and... Um, and, and capture this, and and I got as many people as I could involved. I mean, really, uh, and, and of course, Dominique did too, and so we had about 20, 30 um, people that we were following, so we had 20, 30 crews, uh, cameramen, sound people. We, we gathered them all here at Nomad to brief them on what we wanted to do, and then on the day of, everybody did their thing, and then everybody came back to Nomad at the very end to deliver uh, their, their footage, from which I, I put together this, this short doc. So let's watch it, shall we? <laughs> voyage abracadabra. Il y a longtemps que je ne m'étais pas revu. Me voici en moi comme un homme dans une maison qui s'est faite en son absence. Je te salue, silence. Je ne suis pas revenu pour revenir. I didn't come back to je return. suis arrivé à ce qui commence. I came to what begins. Ce dont nous avons besoin, c'est de nous mettre en route. Relevons le défi, l'espace d'un printemps de tenter de renouer avec le meilleur de nous-mêmes, de prendre le parti d'espérer, d'avoir l'audace de croire à la quête du bonheur pour tous. Ce printemps, nous avons un rendez-vous avec nous-mêmes, avec le type de société où nous voulons vivre, kind of plus simplement. Nous avons rendez-vous avec un après-midi de printemps, le 22 avril, où il fera bon rêver que nous arrivons à ce qui commence. On imaginait ça sous le soleil, sous la chaleur. Et comme tu dis, c'était un temps pour faire des révolutions, ça. C'est 
que quand euh, il y a eu une manifestation au mois de décembre à Montréal, quand le Canada s'est déjà engagé du protocole de Kyoto, puis euh, il y avait 200 personnes à la manifestation, puis on a trouvé ça euh, épouvantable. Puis euh, on s'est dit, c'est pas 200 qu'il faut être, c'est 100 000. Huit jours, ça veut dire que There was a protest in December, she said, and uh, there were 200 people there, which they thought was pathetic. So we don't need 200 people, we need 200,000 people. Now, Dominique that you saw there is walking with people that are going to be walking for like two weeks towards Montreal. This is Gilles Duceppe. Gilles Duceppe was the leader of the opposition party in Canada representing Quebec. He says, this is to protect our land, our earth, our waters. Now, the, these people, this is shot at Nomad, the, 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 the whole soundtrack. Et qui marchent vers Montréal parce que pour dénoncer ce qui est en train de se passer chez eux avec le plan Nord. Je veux laisser quelque chose à mes enfants. Et quand ils s'en vont à, à la chasse, quand ils s'en vont prendre de l'eau, l'eau soit claire. À chaque fois que j'avance, je veux que mes enfants puissent prendre de l'eau et que l'eau soit claire. C'est Gilles Duceppe de nouveau. Il a pris toute sa famille pour marcher avec lui ce jour-là. Il a pris toute sa famille pour marcher avec lui ce jour-là. On ne peut pas développer ça ici, dans, le, dans, dans la vallée du Saint-Laurent, sur nos plus belles terres agricoles du Québec. Le, la vallée du Saint-Laurent, c'est le garde-manger du Québec, puis il y a seulement 2 des terres qui sont cultivables pour l'agriculture. Puis là, cette industrie-là voudrait venir faire 20 000 puits, un puits à tous les kilomètres carrés. Ça, on n'acceptera pas ça, c'est certain. On a tellement un beau paysage, tout ça, on ne veut pas que la, la vallée du Saint-Laurent vienne... C'est là qu'est notre agriculture, c'est là qu'ils sont, oh. qu sont la nourriture qu'on mange. Quand je me prends un verre d'eau du robinet, là, j'espère qu'il est encore bon et que je ne tomberai pas malade à cause de ça. Fait que je ne sais jamais est-ce que ma nappe pratique va être contaminée ou pas, puis je ne veux même pas prendre the, de risques. Essentially, the government wanted to uh, create wells, um, some thousand wells uh, for oil. Farmers obviously are against it. So these people, uh, the band, you know, uh, are, are people that I met on the march and that I saw playing like this. So I, I thought it, it it was suited for them to be doing the soundtrack for the film. This is Frédéric Bach. On a les moyens de faire des choses, mais il faut les utiliser à bon escient. Pas pour soi, mais pour pour tout le monde. That guy that, who's making the drawing of the tree, um, his name is Patrice, and he's the one that did the animation for the Nomad logo. So I got him involved to draw in perspective the, the hand. This is at Cif du Soleil, where Dominique has done a lot of work. So they, they borrowed that space in order to, uh, to coordinate and to plan and uh, choreograph uh, how we will create this humongous hand. We are on the same walk, we have the same values that bring us together. This 
is that was Margie Gillis. Margie Gillis is a famous dancer here in in uh, Montreal, in Canada. Accompanying Frédéric Bach is Emilien Néron. Emilien Néron played uh, in a movie called Monsieur Lazare, which I would love to show you. I, I wanted to show it to you, but uh, our time is too short together. So there's about 40 buses leaving from the four corners of Quebec. This is Julie Castonguay. She is um, Dominique's uh, wife and mother of his three kids. <laughs> We, we managed to get some, a, a helicopter. This is before drones were, were a thing. Managed to get a helicopter to fly above the city for this. And a friend, uh, Sharif Mirshak, ended up being the lucky uh, one up on the helicopter flying over the city that day. So everyone got involved, you know. It was kind of easy to get people to participate in this film. I was the one basically always with uh, Dominique Champagne. I also had my motorcycle, my Royal Enfield, and uh, I would ride, you know, across locations, kind of in back alleys and stuff, to uh, make this happen. These are different political leaders here in Quebec. I, I filmed this myself. Yes. Different, different political leaders are all around this, this same, uh, they're all together giving their speeches one after the other. So a lot of the complaints are against um, the federal government. If, if these are all the provincial uh, leaders. The utilization of our resources must be in accordance with the natural population. In harmony with the nature. To the benefit of everyone. And in the interest of the generations coming. We are assembling because we believe that it is possible. To develop according to a model. To be a real source of enrichment. Of progress and of pride. And a source of inspiration for the world entire. We affirm that we are favorable. To the development that is viable. It has a large part of the energy renewable. To the transport ecology. To the commerce equitable. And to an agriculture durable. So that was the text around which everyone gathered. You know, there was this kind of manifesto for the march, so people would know what they're walking for. Uh, each section. That's uh, to the right is Roy Dupuis. That's one of our finest actors. Bonjour, bonjour. Bonne journée. Bonjour. Ça va bien? Gilles Duceppe is because he's always defended uh, Quebec uh, on the, at the federal level. He was a leader of the Parti Québécois for a long time. And uh, so he's kind of a, a hero here in Quebec. I 
I shot these images? So now we're preparing to start the march. It's, a, it's ringing, it's ringing uh, in each region where the churches are going to be ringing the bells at the same time. <laughs> And thus the march began. Said we started 10 people in a garage. Look how many we are today. This I got to shoot from the um, that location there, that building I was telling you about, from which we're going to be able to to really capture the time lapse of the hand forming. It really felt Sports. like I had the keys to the city that day, like I could I could be anywhere, and that I was everywhere at once through all these cameras. Similar feeling to when I shot that Demare video. You know, where you feel like you have a privileged perspective on the world thanks to, uh, to the camera and, and what I do for a living. So I repeat again, this is Frédéric Bach who made The Man Who Planted Trees. He passed away about a year after we shot this. Gillis again. Imagine how stressed Dominique must be that his vision not come together on that day properly, you know, that the shape is wrong or that people just kind of walk randomly or something like that. On a la 
encore pour 15 minutes, c'est presque plein. En ce moment, il reste juste la pompe, c'est hallucinant. Aïe, aïe, aïe. There's Sharif filming this from the helicopter. We also got a drone at the time to uh, to film this from the um, <laughs> from one of the nearby parks there, but it was very limiting. What we could do was a huge machine. So you see the perspective of the tree um, had to be right, and that building up there, the gray building from which we're filming. Uh, the, the time lapse, that's the perspective that we've designed this for. So that's why the, the middle finger is so much higher. Of course, some jokes were made about that in the media the following day. There, that was filmed with the uh, that other drone I mentioned. Comme ça, comme aujourd'hui, qu'on pense qu'on est ensemble, on est fort et euh, on est une famille, on est un arbre. La fête, tout à coup, devient un arbre. La fête, tout à coup, c'est dit, moi j'ai des racines, moi je veux vivre, je veux aussi avoir un jour des feuilles comme au printemps. <laughs> that was me filming in the background there. Quand il était en haut, là, oui. il voyait, il y avait du monde jusque sur du lutte. Okay. Il, il voyait vraiment loin. Il y avait du monde jusque sur Berry, sainte catherine Vraiment content, son blague. C'est une très, très belle journée aujourd'hui. Merci qui va nous rejoindre au-delà de la différence, au-delà de l'indifférence. Ben aujourd'hui, on est 250 000 à marcher ensemble vers quelque chose. J'ai vu la plus belle marée de fraternité de ma vie. Et j'ai envie de vous dire les premiers vers de l'homme rapaillé, j'ai fait de plus loin que moi un voyage. I did further than myself a trip 
a magical trip. It's been a long time since I haven't seen myself. I find myself again in a home that was built while I was gone. I say hello to silence. I didn't come back to return. I've returned to what begins. Gaston Miron, poem by Gaston Miron. All right, that was Symphonie pour un 22 avril. Quite, uh, yeah, it's really special for me to, to see that again. I, I, you know, even though I share it, I try to share it almost every year. I, I don't usually watch it again. It's almost painful, of course, to, to see something and see all of the technical things that I would now improve upon, things I would shoot better today edit better um, and, and so on it's uh, you know as terms of sound uh, etc but that's not obviously what this movie is about this movie was really about doing something together you know doing something as a, as a people and um, and it's strange because you know, I was never much of an activist uh, myself um, I didn't do go to a lot of uh, protests in my life and so of course when you're involved in something like this you get involved in the movement as well and um, and yet only about a year after we we were uh, we had shot this or <laughs> that we had uh, taken part in the march Already it felt so very dated, like the prime minister of the province, uh, Charles, uh, Jean Charest, was already gone a year after, was already replaced with the woman in blue uh, <laughs> that was his opponent. So, you know, it was a new guard, yet it was the same stories. And, and now nine years later, it's going to be a 10 year anniversary of this uh, March next year. So nine years later, uh, it already, it doesn't just feel dated. It's like you could take all those signs and just change the names and this, and you would find that not much has changed essentially. What has changed is the pandemic. People are involved in the world in a new way, in a different way with the pandemic. Um, what the pandemic has done is reset priorities for uh, for most people. You know what's important for you in your life, um, your your health, uh, your kids, or your parents, and that sort of thing. And so, as people are um, like in in the state specifically, the pandemic put everyone inside, and then you know with Donald Trump or the past four years and and all this stuff it all kind of boiled over with the pandemic and then you had protests when jo George Floyd died yet the Black Lives Matter movement really uh, take the country by storm and I wonder if that would have happened had people not been going through the pandemic not been in quarantine not been getting so frustrated and economically socially that uh, finally, um, that's it. Everyone, or as many people as you can imagine, would get involved in an activist movement. And I would hope uh, 
that uh, nine years from now, when we look at a movie like this again, or, or that we look at the Black Lives Matter movement or the, you know, uh, the sentencing of, uh, of uh, George Floyd's murderer, um, that, uh, that, I, that we'll be able to see some kind of change, that we'll feel that it's not just same old, you know, that we're not still marching for the same things. But unfortunately, I, I don't think that's the case. Just from what I'm seeing now, watching the, the, this movie um, again nine years later, it's, um, I don't know, doesn't seem like, uh, it, it seems like it was a little bit in vain. It was a whole lot of theater on our part and that it, it didn't create real pressure upon uh, the governments and the, the larger corporations. And so is it all up to the citizens to create the change? I would argue that it, it's not up to the citizens collectively. It's, it's up to us personally to, to create our, the changes we want to see in the world. It's the kind of change we want to see in our own lives. That's what I try to do anyway. I, I'm far, far from being perfect. But instead of complaining about things that are beyond my power, I try to see what I can do. So maybe... Um, you'll, uh, you'll plant a tree today. That's an idea. Moving on now to Xavier Dolan. Well, I'm wearing this t-shirt, Uniting Our Nation Through Film. Why am I wearing that? This is for uh, Real Canada's uh, Canadian Film Day, which was yesterday, I believe. Um, yeah, the 21st. They used to be on 420, but they changed it for some reason. I think they had too much competition from, a, from another holiday. So now uh, Real Canada actually hired me a, f a couple of years to, to interview filmmakers for Canadian Film Day. So some of the interviews I showed you, like the Mina Shum interview I showed you last week, that was done in the context of Canadian Film Day. Why do we have a Canadian Film Day? It's, it's because it's been going on for about 10 years and, and um, it's, it's because um, we need to celebrate Canadian film, otherwise no one will. <laughs> you know, we produce a lot of movies every year, but uh, not they're not seen as much as they should be. And uh, of course, the government invests a lot in the culture and, and in film uh, as well, as you uh, have come to understand. But, but still, the audiences are not going out to see the movies. So an organization like Real Canada, R-E-E-L Canada, uh, has put together this national holiday to celebrate our, our films. So today I will uh, talk specifically about um, an incredible director. I say it like that because, I mean, it's really incredible what this young man has achieved in nearly 11, 12 years. He uh, released his first film in 2009 at the age of 19 years old. He was 19 years old when he was making it. He wrote it at 17. It's called J'ai tué ma mère. I killed my mother. His name Xavier is Xavier Dolan. He is not defined by his age, but it's it just shows how remarkable this author is. So. Let's, let's just get into his movies. I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of each one of his films, trailers from pretty much all of his films. Um, not so many interviews with him. I, I, I caught one uh, this morning that I th think I, I might include if we still have time, but mostly let's just uh, dive in. I have a feeling this is going to be your favorite director from, uh, from all of the Canadian directors I've, I will have shown you so far. Votre témoignage, votre compréhension, votre amour ce soir me laisse croire qu'il faut faire des films qui nous ressemblent. We have to make films that look like us. Sans compromis. Without compromise. Sans céder à la facilité. Without Même si l'émotion est une aventure easy. qui voyage parfois Even mal. Even if emotions autres, are adventures that don't travel well, but they all Mon land at the destination. Mon vient de vivre un succès monstre, une ovation de 12 minutes en 50 festivals de Cannes. Je n'ai jamais vu ça.
got a 12 voilà minute ovation for il y a, mommy. Il y a un an, nous Something that had never happened at Cannes before. Dans le décor, avec des doublures qui avaient nos costumes, alors qu'on avait à peine lu le script. Xavier est le seul de tous les réalisateurs que j'ai connus. Il écrit les scénarios, il écrit les dialogues de ces scénarios, il fait les costumes, he writes, il he fait makes le montage the tout seul, he et il fait les sous-titres français et anglais. And he makes the Xavier, effectivement, est, in English est sans cesse présent, c'est comme s'il jouait avec nous. La, la caméra s'arrête pas, il parle pendant les prises, dit cela, essaye ça, essaye he quelque chose. While that we're rolling. On était tellement... Okay, here's here's another documentary about uh, Xavier Dolan before we get into the film separately. I thought this one was very Là, well told as well. Qui dit tout le temps. C'est spécial. C'est bien ça. Quand on dit c'est spécial, est-ce qu'on n'a pas l'intelligence de comprendre la différence ou de l'apprécier ou de d'avoir le courage de dire qu'on a eu ça? Ma mère me dit souvent que je suis spécial. When Quebecois director Xavier Dolan's first feature, I Killed My Mother, premiered at Cannes in 2008, the critical reception mostly surrounded his age at the time of production, 19. Once that obligatory disclosure was made, reviews often drifted toward the formal qualities of the film, described variably as freewheeling, featuring abrupt and sporadic flourishes, and ultimately stylistically mercurial. By the time of Heartbeats, his second and equally formally-minded feature, the conversation had shifted from a director's raw decisions to a question of influence. These aesthetic comparisons became a seemingly necessary component, always including the same names and rivaling discussion of story, characters and performance. With the release of Mommy, his fifth feature film, and the fourth to premiere at Cannes, where it won the jury prize alongside Jean-Luc Godard, the readings of Delon's style from critics often focus on it as ornamental rather than its relation to the story. This perhaps stems from the constantly shifting narrative projected upon him with the release of each film, rather than a look at all of his films with a focus on the film's forms. With that perspective, it's not sporadic flourishes or mercurial shifting of technique that one witnesses, but rather a sustained, evolving use of techniques that we might call the style of Xavier Dolan. Throughout each of Dolan's films, complex and sometimes erratic characters bristle against the world around them, including the people nearest and dearest to them. In I Killed My Mother, Hubert has a volatile relationship with his mother, thrown into sharp relief by his boyfriend's liberal mother and his nurturing French teacher. In Heartbeats, Francis and Marie compete for the affection of Nico to the detriment of their own relationship. In Lawrence Anyways, Lawrence discovers his identity as a woman, complicating his career as a teacher and his relationships with his parents and long-term partner Fred. In Tom at the Farm, the death of Tom's boyfriend Guillaume brings him into a destructive, codependent relationship with Guillaume's brother. While the psychological condition of Stevie and Mommy takes its toll on the possibility of a healthy relationship with his mother and the world as a whole. They are characters that find themselves not just in moments of crisis, but generally undergoing a period of transition, often spurred by these crises. Though Delon's formal devices in these films clearly draw attention to themselves, they are uniformly in service of establishing a portrait of these characters, their perspectives, desires, and anxieties. Indeed, in three of the films, we find characters in the films pontificating on their lives as part of the narrative structure of the films. And just as these different characters share certain elements of their personalities across the films, so too does the mode of representation, where repeated techniques over five features attest to a Delon style. If Delon's style is so connected to the representation of his characters, an important starting point for this investigation is the question of how they are shot. The audience is often presented with images of the backs of these characters' heads, attesting to a difficulty of access to them as people. They are characters that, even at their most open, remain apart from a complete understanding by the audience. 
Yet this camera setup also positions the audience in a similar perspective to the character, seeing some of what they see and following behind their harried movements. Similarly, there is a visual motif of these characters looking downward when they are shot from the front, sometimes with the camera domineering over them at a high angle. If these films are portraits, these are the moments where the viewer is denied the access expected in that type of representation, particularly the eyes of the subject. Emblematic of the weight of the situation pressing down on them, the viewer's position in these moments is not alongside the character, but apart from or upon them. Here the audience is belonging more to society at large than with the character themselves. In each of these devices, it's clear that despite how close these films come to their characters, there remains a divide to some degree that precisely mirrors the position of society. However, in other circumstances, the audience is given an extremely privileged position in the mind of these characters, balancing the representation. In each film, there are memories, fears, and fantasies that manifest visually to offer a better understanding of the worldview of these particular individuals. The heightened perspective of a character and the audience's observation coalesce most notoriously in Delon's use of slow motion. Initially a point of comparison to other filmmakers, Delon has laid claim to this device across his five films. It is used in moments of revelry, revelation, and performance. Often paired with music, there is the feeling that these moments represent the character's own self-representation, not just embodying their emotional state, but also how they would direct the moment themselves, or at least demonstrate how they are aware that they are being watched. In each of these films, the main characters are either artists or at least careful curators of personal style. We again get the sense of how Delon's style is at once emblematic of his characters and yet also exists at a mediated distance. This distance becomes literal in Lawrence anyways, which introduces the motif of long shots of hallways. Doorways and hallways have always had a significant place in Delon's films, embodying characters' movements to and from domestic spaces as the camera tracks in or out. Characters are framed like paintings in their domestic spaces, though this is often in conjunction with the crises they face. Meanwhile, the audience is both ushered into these spaces by the moving camera, as well as repelled by it. By Lawrence anyways, the transitory nature of these framings pertain to the protagonist's discovery of her gender, while accompanying feelings of isolation, including those felt by her partner Fred, are underscored by the distance between the camera and the characters. The framing of shots and the blocking of characters within them is paramount to the investigation of Delon's style. And this is perhaps no clearer than in his use of symmetrical framing. When a frame is composed with complete symmetry, it illustrates all of the points discussed, portraits of characters and their relationships to one another, and the awareness of mediation between the character and the audience. Each of Delon's films centers around key and sometimes overwhelming relationships, and as such, so too does the formal representation. Oscillating between antagonistic and interdependent, these relationships are visually mapped out through symmetrical groupings within shots or shot reverse shot systems. They develop an aesthetic harmony that can be juxtaposed with asymmetrical frames when this balance is upset within the story, resulting in an off-kilter atmosphere in the image when the same lack is felt by the characters. Beginning with Lawrence, the symmetry becomes even more intertwined with the concept of the portrait, where the 4-3 framing allows for shots of one and two individuals to fill the frame, or rather the frame is form-fitting to the characters. Similarly, Tom at the farm introduces the devices of the characters literally influencing the frame, when the already widescreen thriller becomes even more widescreen when the anxiety experienced by the protagonist reaches its peaks. Both formats illustrate the connection between formal symmetry, the frame itself, and the characters and their relationships, a connection that has remained central to these films even as Delon develops new ways to express this interest visually in Mummy's unique one-to-one -one aspect ratio, reflecting the latest in portraiture, Instagram aspect ratio, and the rise of the selfie.
This relationship between film style and the characters it conforms to describes each of the formal motifs observed here, which are present consistently throughout Delon's filmography, rather than seemingly random elements injected into each film. Instead, even new developments of past techniques or the introduction of new ones contribute to this overall literal balance between form and content, or rather form and characters, that can be labeled the Delon style. Okay, this is the, the trailer for J'ai tué ma mère. I killed my mother. Tu sais, Hubert, si jamais ça va vraiment mal à la maison, tu peux venir habiter ici les fins de semaine. Il me disait tout quand il était petit. Maintenant, je ne peux même plus ouvrir la bouche sans que si, sans que ça, si jamais correct, il y a toujours quelque chose. Je pense que je suis faite pour ne pas avoir de mère. Peut-être que ta mère est faite pour ne pas avoir de fils. J'imagine que aux yeux des so gens... So Xavier was a, a, a child sûr. actor. Son quand He même. was in shows and Mais stuff like that in, in, um, in, here in Quebec. Ça a peut-être duré une seconde, ça a peut-être duré un an. His ça father was an actor oublié, and his mother was a teacher. Ils l'ont quand même fait. Je vais intégrer un pensionnat dans une semaine. Tu besoin d'être encadré, Hubert. Puis d'ailleurs, tu as Because he made some money making moves or, or acting, he put $400,000 of his own money in this first film, which he wrote at 17. And then uh, he asked for, for money from Telefilm to complete it, which was refused because uh, he didn't request it from the right department. He, so when he finally went for the independent department, Uh, they gave him $400,000 more, making it an $800,000 budget. The film was a humongous success and at Cannes. He won uh, multiple awards there, like uh, best first film, that sort of thing. I don't know what happened. Quand j'étais petit, on s'aimait. Oh, je l'aime. Je peux la regarder, lui dire allô, être à côté d'elle. Mais je peux pas être son fils. Je pourrais être le fils de n'importe qui, mais pas d'elle. I Killed My Mother uh, was in competition against Denny Villeneuve's film uh, Polytechnique. They came out the same year. And um, here in Canada, the, this film won over Polytechnique, the Jutra Award, uh, for best film, best screenplay, and most uh, successful film outside of Quebec. And this was a bit of an upset to, to beat Denny Villeneuve's film. Il y aurait juste un petit peu de ce bar-là. En bas. Non, de l'autre bar. C'est bon. Moving on now to Heartbeats, 
his second film. This film was financed uh, privately, so no funding from uh, Telefilm or Sadek. The film leaves the usual uh, theme of the mother-son relationship for one where two people uh, compete over the love of, of the same man. Qui est cet android? Sa mère, elle s'appelle Désirée. Me l'a présenté il y a deux secondes. Elle m'a dit que j'avais l'air d'une femme au foyer des années 50. Elle peut bien parler avec son look de spire du Captain Spock. Mais au moins, j'ai pas l'air d'une pétasse assoiffée d'un Manhattan désuet. Oui, mais ta robe est légèrement anachronique. Pardon? C'est vintage, je te fais remarquer. Je sais, mais c'est pas parce que c'est vintage que c'est beau. So, we mentioned it earlier. But it's good to, to mention again that uh, Xavier Dallin does the, his own costume design. I can't think of any other director that, uh, that does that. I can think of other directors that write their own films, of course. But really, this makes Xavier Dallin a true auteur. Now, what is an auteur? Is it, are you an auteur as soon as you write your own script? Not necessarily. Filmmaking is a real collaborative process. It takes the involvement and the soul of so many other people and departments to, to bring a vision to life. But when a vision is singular, as in the case of uh, Dolan, um, you, you really have the, the making of an auteur there. What I found uh, when I first started watching his movies, when he started making them, I found them to be frustratingly confident. You know, how can uh, someone in his early 20s be making films that borrow from other films and uh, tackles such emotional scenes with such utter confidence, really? I don't have an answer to that. But, uh, but again, it's what makes this filmmaker uh, kind of visionary. His use of music as well um, is so... Um, like, th there's two songs in his movies that are some of my favorites, but that I was ashamed to... I never would have put them in one of my own movies because it's like they were too kitsch, you know? Um, but, uh, but whenever I would hear that Céline Dion song, I would, it would make me cry. And then when I see it pop up in, in one of his movies and he popularized that song again, On ne change pas, which you'll see in, the, in Mommy. Um, yeah, we, we here in Quebec we start I, we started hearing the song in parties and that sort of thing. It would play here at Nomad very often, you know, and and everyone would go crazy over it. It's not a song you dance to, but it's it's a great song. And um, and Xavier Dallin brought it out of the woodworks. I hadn't seen the movie yet when uh, when I started hearing the song, and I I asked people why is this song so popular again, and sure enough. So that, that's the kind of confidence that I mean. There's another kind of confidence that's, uh, that's worth mentioning, which is he dares to make emotional 
movies. You know, contrary to Jean-Luc Godard, for example, which might have a similar stylistic style to, to him, you could see that Xavier might have been influenced by Jean-Luc Godard. Um, Jean-Luc Godard never goes beyond the surface, it seems. You know, you can look at subtext and that sort of thing in, in, in Godard's films. But in, um, in Dalan's movies, you have people going through real emotional struggle like it's their right to, you know? And it's, it's, hard, it's difficult to write things like this or stories like this, let alone scenes that have uh, real emotional content. Um, and uh, Xavier says if he never had a choice but to do that. You know, that's what he was put on this earth to do, is to tackle these tougher emotions, these people that are less than beautiful. And, uh, and he finds the beauty in that. Now, Heartbeats, I would say, is the lighter of his films, and it's not to say it's a light film, but it is, uh, it, it is about uh, love and uh, uh, unreturned love. This is the end of uh, Heartbeats. Les, the title in French is Les Amours Imaginaires, which is The Imaginary Loves. Which I find is a more fitting title for, for the story. It's really that he dares to be pretentious, <laughs> but it's what makes them pure, oddly enough, you know, is that it's, um, he dares to go there. Remember him on the left from uh, Tudor Nicole? Played the drummer in that. Alors, quel est votre nom complet 
Laurence Emmanuel James Alia. <rire> Moving on to Laurence anyways. I love you. Proust explique beaucoup pour mon goût. 300 pages pour nous faire comprendre que tu en cul ta tave. <rire> c'est trop. Félicitations Laurence. Non mais c'est un petit prix. Vous boirez rien à de santé ce soir en allant chercher ça. Surprise. 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 Santé Sherry. Au début quand je t'ai vu Fred, j'ai pensé que ça s'en irait. Je t'aime tellement. Il faut que je t'aime comme je suis. Je comprends pas. Je veux être une femme. Tu vas être heureux comme ça Ça va ranger les choses Tu crois que je vais me martyriser J'ai pensé que je suis une mauvaise mère Je m'en fous Moi, j'ai besoin de lui. J'ai besoin de me réveiller avec lui. I get Et ton père real, uh, Ton père uh, a uh, watching. Uh, besoin de toi, Fred. Sans toi, watching that trailer. On va faire that, ça ensemble. This is the first film where I fell in love and I kind of c'est une révolte. Non, si. I don't know. I thought it was so daring a look at, uh, at the. Tra I, it's like I understood uh, transgendered people so much better after watching this film because he's not gay. He wants to be with his uh, with his lover Fred anyway, and, and he is. Uh, and Fred wants to be with Laurence anyways. You know, <laughs> and just that. Um, It's just so very beautiful that love goes beyond all of this. J'ai jamais eu l'impression que t'étais ma mère. Mais moi j'ai jamais eu l'impression que t'étais mon fils. Par contre j'ai l'impression que t'es ma fille. Y a rien, ni personne qui peut avaler cette histoire. Sauf toi Laurence. Non, sauf toi. C'est toi qui as voulu ça Laurence. On l'a fait, on a essayé, mais tu peux pas tout avoir. J'ai choisi de descendre la pente dans la peau d'une femme. Toutes les femmes la descendent. Après l'avoir montée. T'as-tu déjà acheté une perruque pour ton chum, toi T'as-tu déjà eu peur quand tu sors de chez vous qu'il se fasse tabasser dans la rue et qu'il te revienne pas en un morceau Little uh, kind of name dropping here. They did the art direction for this film here at Nomad in the, in the garage. They set up all these tables and. Yeah. There's so many accessories, different things that are very particular to his films that they needed the whole garage to organize this stuff for one location and the next. And a lot of lo the locations were around here, so it made sense. Okay, now. Tom at the farm. I don't know if uh, any of you have seen it too. Um, the horror film there, but it's written by Stephen King. Um, so the whole beginning of it too actually has Xavier Dallas starring in it. Xavier, I saw in an interview uh, while researching for this class that he was saying how he dreams of making a movie like a Star Wars movie, for example, and that th th this is part of his ambition to be making major Hollywood pictures. And uh, in this case, he's, he's borrowing on uh, Hitchcock, going for that kind of thriller um, genre and tone, really, more than the genre itself. It's a light thriller. And you can see from one movie to the next how for Xavier Dallant to break free essentially means for him to, to lean more towards popular tropes, I guess. As you'll see even in a movie like this, this very last movie, The Death and Life of uh, John F. Donovan, Yeah, where he's working with major actors, like there's three Oscar winners in that movie. And uh, and as well, the language keeps evolving to, to find more traditional, uh, I guess a more traditional language. So that's a very interesting um, journey 
no, you, you would think it'd be kind of the other way around, that one would start with having kind of a, you know, a popular approach, but I think that with him, he's, um, yeah, he's leaning more and more on just what makes him feel good as an audience member. And you can tell even from his taste in popular music and, and in, in some popular films as well, yeah, how that's a natural for him. This film had a difficult distribution. He said in August 2015, uh, in an interview, Dolan said, no one knows me in the States because the movies have been released in such an awkward, irregular fashion, all by different distributors. I don't want to sound pretentious, but it's puzzling. This is close to, uh, to the way he spoke about uh, the way that movies are financed in, um, in Canada. He said that the system to acquire funding is an obsolete financing mechanism that holds the creative assets of Quebec hostage. I, I wanted to share this scene here and, and the next one as well um, to see again his interesting use of aspect ratios. Now, as the tension rises in this scene, the, the aspect ratio becomes wider and wider and wider. Isn't it great the color of his hair with the corn? Okay, moving on to a music video that uh, Xavier Dolan directed for Indochine, between making Laurence Anyways and uh, Mommy, his next film. Now, uh, you will see that, uh, I think he might have even made this before Laurence Anyways. Um, but you see that this is Antoine Pilon, who is the actor in, um, in, in Mummy, and that's the wor first time that they worked together was on this music video, which was quite controversial and even censored for TV uh, in a lot of cases. And the kind of scene that we're seeing here, where kids in a boarding school are bothering um, the gay kid, this kind of scene where we've seen many of his films, we see in uh, John F. Donovan, for example, in The Death and Life of John F. De Donovan, his most recent film. Uh, or no, his second to most nearest. This film made... Brilliant stuff. Wouldn't you agree? The honesty of the storytelling, of the emotions, very fine, refined things to express. Now, I've just got here and I think I'm losing signal already. Hello? Can you hear me now? Sorry. 
Have any of you recognized which music video this is yet? Hello, it's me I was wondering if after all these years you'd like to me To go over everything They say the time's supposed to heal ya But I ain't done much healing Hello, can you hear me? I'm in California dreaming about who we used to be when we were younger and free. This music I've video broke the Vivo record for the most views in 24 hours, over 27.7 million views in a day. It was shot partly in IMAX, again by André Turpin. And he, Dolan received the, the Juno Award for Best Music Video that year. Douze ans que j'y suis pas allé. Douze ans, tu peux vraiment pas les saquer, dis donc. Saquer, non. La famille, quoi. Il arrive qu'on laisse chez des gens dont on ne comprend pas qu'ils nous soient proches ou reliés par le sang. Et dont on s'éloigne, volontairement. Douze ans. Et tout à coup, l'idée d'un déjeuner. Rattraper le temps perdu, non. Prévenir du temps qui reste. Douze ans. C'est long. Et rien depuis. La mère, si, quelquefois. Et ma sœur, que je connais à peine, qui n'avait que dix ans quand je suis parti. La belle-sœur aussi, femme de mon frère, charmante à ce qu'on dit. Et puis mon frère. Et pourquoi avoir peur d'eux, au fond Ça pourrait être agréable. Comme dans les romans où tout finit en beauté, on finirait par s'aimer, on rirait avec bêtise. Il fermerait les yeux sur les erreurs. Où il me reprocherait tout, ne me pardonnerait rien. Ça pleurerait, ça crierait, comme dans les feuilletons qui ne se posent pas de questions. Les secrets, les sanglots, les reproches. Et qu'est-ce qu'ils feront quand je leur dirai Quand je leur dirai que je m'en vais, que je ne reviendrai pas, de manière définitive, en souillant leurs souvenirs. Qu'est-ce qui se passera Imprévisible. Et pourtant, ce n'est qu'un déjeuner en famille. This is a French and Quebec production um, that was all shot in Quebec with French actors. So it's taking place in France, but really it's, it's shot in, in Quebec. This film has incredible characters, amazing character work by the actors, and it is a very powerful ending. It's like it's, it creates a moment of silence that is so unique. I encourage you to watch this film. It's about a young man who is, uh, I believe, an, a writer or an actor who goes home uh, and this is his last weekend on Earth because he plans to, to kill himself soon after. Amazing editing there, where the movement is repeated three times. Of course, edited by Xavier himself. You can see there that he really just got his, his very favorite actors together. All of his favorite French actors. Wonderful flashback scene here that I thought I should include. More stylized, uh, feels like a music video, really. But you start recognizing, and this is a Quebec actor who's actually a very good friend of Antoine Pilon. They, they live together in real life. It's the kid with long hair there. 
Okay, now to wrap it up, I just, I found this rather beautiful montage of, uh, this is the last song in Donovan, and it brings together all of, uh, of his movies for which I'm sure you've developed great appreciation. So the death and life of John F. Donovan um, also feels very semi, uh, very autobiographical, <laughs> but it's it's really the the point of view of the little boy. If, any of you, if you've seen that film, it's a little boy that has a correspondence with this famous actor, and um, the little boy is uh, enamored with uh, with him. Xavier 
also used to do that, used to write to these actors uh, at a very young age. He wrote to Leonardo DiCaprio, he wrote to Susan Sarandon, with whom uh, he worked for, uh, for John Doe. And, um, and also, he's got a tattoo of, a, uh, of Dumbledore with a quote from Dumbledore that uh, I mean to find for you on his, on his arm. And he got to act with uh, or, or have uh, the man who plays Dumbledore in the Harry Potter movies also act in, in uh, John F. Donovan. So, uh, so yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot in that film. That film is, is co-written with Jacob Tierney, who's been his boyfriend for some time and is also a film director, um, who's worked a lot with Jay Baruchel. And his, his last film, uh, Matthias and uh, Maxim, uh, which I haven't seen yet, has music by Jean-Michel Blais, for whom I've directed a couple of music videos myself, and, uh, and the soundtrack by Jean-Michel Blais, who's a pianist, was improvised, and um, it won a major award at Cannes uh, last year. So I think it's only the beginning for, for Xavier Dallin. Now, I, I had something else uh, that I, I just included at the last minute today. Um, what time is it? 12.37. Well, I have an interview with Xavier Dallin that uh, you might find interesting, but uh, do I have enough time? I want to talk to you about your presentations next week. Let's see. Such a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. The world, maybe not all of English-speaking Canada, but the world was... But the rest of the world around it? <laughs> well, the, the world was watching Cannes, and you won a huge, a huge prize, the jury prize at Cannes for your film, uh, Mummy. What was that like? It was, um, it was amazing. Something happened with Mummy that changed things for me a little, I feel. You know, with my age, I sort of struggle for credibility, and people um, tend to treat me like uh, a kid, or uh, which I am, I guess, <laughs> physically. Or uh, but you're 25. I'm 25. Um, but then mommy happened, and people were like, "Oh, okay," uh, and that was that was great. I, I can't get over it. I I, I don't have to, <laughs> but I, I, and I don't think I will. I mean, I still think about it. I guess every day. You are very young. Um, some people compare you to Orson Welles, but he made his first movie at 25. Yeah, he was lazy. <laughs> lazy. You made your first, you were 18, weren't yeah, you? No, I was 19. I oh, wrote it when I was well. 17. I was 19 when I started to shoot it, 19 and 20. Uh, so Orson Welles is lazy. Yeah. He's a late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't work. I don't create with my age. You know, it doesn't. It's not a. It's not a. It, it's not an obstacle. It's not a. An asset. It's not. I don't use it. I don't think about it. I just, you know, create and do what I have to do. There's a mother-son relationship theme, obviously, in your movies. Yes. Your first movie, um, I killed my mother. You've said was to punish your mom. The second one's a little different. Um, if I killed my mother was meant to punish my mom, then mommy was meant to avenge her. But you like your mother more now? I've always loved my mother. Mm. And when she saw I killed my mother, she told me two years after, because we never really talked about it. And I know it's harsh, you know, and it's a story. And, but, I mean, the character of the son is pretty brash and bratty and, 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 and you know, he. It, most of the people related to the mother, although she was very tacky and, and, and sort of kitsch or whatever, people related to that mom and was like, poor women, she is tortured by this asshole son. Mummy is really a story of motherly love. Yes. And son love too. Yes. Yeah. But she's more the hero, I suppose, of the second one. She is. Mm -hmm. And mommy really is um, Diane's. That's. And there's a lot of very successful Quebec directors right now. True. Why, why is that? How do you explain that? What is it about Quebec? 
you know, in Quebec, we've 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 been told, and this is maybe something Canadian too. You know, we've we've you know, until the '60s, we were dominated and ruled uh, and un- under church soul authority, and 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 when we broke free from that insane. Um, omnipresence of the church and, and clerical omnipresence and everything. I think that, you know, we also broke free from the sort of convictions that, you know, those Christian values is uh, such like, uh, such as, you know, having any f- sort of remote ambition is ungodly or any desire for wealth, any desire for success, any desire for uh, winning uh, or th- all of this in Quebec can be seen as as unseemly because you you if you prefer to you know achieve things that are greater than working from nine to five and and then taking the metro and then going to bed you are pretentious you know and you should get back down to earth and you should stop daydreaming so does that make you different than canadian directors i do think that some people especially in Quebec right now, but I, I do not know, you know, the, the equivalent to Jean-Marc Vallée or Denis Villeneuve or Philippe Vallardeau here in, in, in English Canada. I know, obviously, Adam Goey, I know David Cromer, I know mm-hmm. Gavin, but I don't know who are the contemporaries of Philippe and, and Jean-Marc. But what I do know about them is that um, they have sheer enthusiasm for cinema and, and, and they don't feel like they have to do films in a Quebec way, in a Quebec smallness. They don't feel they have to abide by any rules. You know, they just want to make good movies. And this is why they're doing movies in the States right now. They're not afraid of going to the States and, and working there. Until a few years ago, Quebecers went in droves, by the millions really, to see Quebec-made films. And now they're going to see these American blockbusters. Um, those, are the, those are the ones making the most money in Quebec now. Is that, what does that say? Uh, are they not? Are they less interested in their own yes. culture? Yes. Sure. I feel like they, the Quebec public has been disappointed by many Quebec movies, and they've lost the desire to see them. Um, we've. Is there some something political going on there too? Because it used to be, you know, you were supposed to see Quebec films because you were supporting the culture, and. I don't think this is not. Now more people speak. English too, or and so we're seeing more English films. So I'm just wondering, is there a political motivation? People have always too? spoken. Yeah, but I don't think it has anything to, to do with it. With that, I don't think people, you know, have lost faith in an identity and then lost faith in. A, I just think that the business did this to herself in mm-hmm. Quebec. I'm not afraid to talk about Quebec, Quebec's culture, identity, problems, complexes with strengths, weaknesses. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of that. Do you get anyway? Political? People don't like me there, so Do you, well, not? there's a hit, fair amount of people who like me and don't like me. So I don't care about shocking people because oh, you are the whatever. l'enfant terrible. That whole it's thing. The, it's, I just I just speak my mind, and it's just for me, it's absolutely normal. But people are like, it's there's a we've lost the the interest for sane and healthy and plainly normal debate. Hmm. Thank you so much. You're it's welcome. Been, yeah, it's Thank been fun. you. All right, so we actually uh, we squeezed it in. I'm glad we did uh, because some of the themes he, he touches upon there are are some of the ones we've been talking about ourselves. So uh, you let me know if if I made you discover uh, one of your new favorite filmmakers, and just getting a sense of who some of you are. Uh, I, I was going to talk about other film directors, some of which he just mentioned um, in this class. But when I got into Xavier Dolan, I just thought this is going to speak to you more than anything else I can show you. I hopefully it did. I'm very proud to uh, to come from a similar place as Xavier Dolan. Um, now uh, that's it for for the class today. Next week. Oh, you got to do before tomorrow your idea survey. I think that has something to do with how, what kind of job I'm doing with this class. So, uh, so please do. I'm, I was supposed to do that within the class, but I trust you to get it done on your own time. Please do that. 
and then next week we're presenting your projects. So please send me things in advance before the class so that I can plan for them a little bit. If you've written an essay, maybe you want to read your essay out loud for the class. I would very much like that kind of approach. Um, and, um, and otherwise, I mean, good luck. If anybody wants to uh, talk to me about your projects, you can stick around now or reach out to me over the next week. And uh, yeah, happy Earth Day, gang, and uh, happy Canadian Film Day, and, uh, and have a great week. Great spring, all of that. Ciao, gang. Thank you. Bye.